when uh, my mother wasn't allowed to go to a co-ed university she had to do her MA privately I have been asked how did your husband allow you to work after you got married allow you to work after <laughs> you got married and uh, my daughter nobody asked sir all my life I always stayed away from them but love for them uh, has never faded I mean, it never faded away even now when they are not there uh, uh, it's not painful it's void yeah. yeah okay I don't think time heals I think memories heal uh, and then you as Manu said that you just remember the memories and uh, and the void I do not feel uh, because I feel his presence uh, temperamentally um, I would say Soha is more like her father and um, Saif is uh, more like me Rarely in our profession do you feel so lucky to be sitting opposite people whose creative bent of mind can actually say that oh maybe you're just blessed and you don't deserve to be here Today I'm joined with a terrific trio uh, who have delivered, who are going to deliver with Gulmohar and I'm pretty sure that you're gonna cry and you're also gonna give your heart away to the film because that's what I feel the film has its heart in the right place. Uh, so, firstly, director. Director has done a fantastic job, Rahul, and the actors who I don't think need any mention, Manoj Sir and Sharmila, ma'am. Uh, thank you for doing this. I genuinely mean it when I say that, you know, I feel blessed. I think I'm living my mother's dream today, sitting next to you. Mm -hmm. I've been told that, listen, this better be your best interview, otherwise you're not coming home. <laughs> so that, that has definitely that happened. Is, that is pressure. That is that is pressure. It's a Bengali mother, you know. So <laughs> ferocious Bengali mother. I want to I want to delve into the nitty gritties of the film. You know, the interpersonal relationships, the dilemma, uh, the complexities that you beautifully portray to the characters, and the subtle, subtle social stereotypes that you <laughs> nudge at, and then you really question and you just let it be. Yeah. Beautiful. I think wow. it's poetic in a lot of way. ways. I want to ask you first, ma'am, that in a lot of ways, you are the matriarch, but there, there's so much strength in the silences, in the poise. You are not loud, you're not, you not putting it on the table, you're not putting your choices on the table, but you also make your own choices. And there have been times where uh, we've seen, like my mother tells me she's, she, she's born in the 60s, so she tells me that there's been a time when she had to fight a lot of those social stigmas and stereotypes because she was a certain way. Um, you also had to do that. Similarly, your character has had to do that, which we find out towards the end of the film as well. Did you resonate with that, with all your past experiences? Uh, the first thing that attracted me to uh, say yes or wanted me to say yes was the script. I didn't uh, write at the beginning start finding yeah. equation with my life and the, the and Kusum. So the script I just absolutely loved. And uh, not just my, the whole thing. Because, uh, you know, films are not just about one person. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, a, it's spread out. Every one of them is, uh, has an equal role. And uh, in the making, the script, uh, the film reflects what the script promised. You know, yeah. it doesn't deviate from that. In the making, he's not subtracted anything from anybody's role. If yeah. anything, it's enhanced their role. So that way he stuck to the script. So that is what really uh, attracted me. And uh, yes, in a way, my experiences and, you know, uh, the stage of my life and age of, uh, you know, where I am, uh, I have taken hard decisions and I have taken uh, decision contrary to the no. social, social expectation. So, um, and I realized that there is no other way to, you cannot, like if you are, uh, like say, um, you're a single person playing a tennis match and there are lots of other, so you, if you take them all, you know, live according to other people's perspective, then your perspective just, uh, in any case, you won't be able to please anybody. So you might as well do what you want to do, hopefully not uh, hurting anybody. But it is uh, your right to express yourself the way you wish to and live the life that you want to, so that you have 
minimum regrets. Regrets there always will be, but you have less regrets. You know, yeah. you can't say because of that person I didn't do this. You know, so I think I've lived like that, and I found some resonance in uh, Kusum. I want to ask both of you because one thing that connects both of you, I don't know how much you will agree. I feel that um, a dialogue here. Uh, dirty picture me Anju Mahindru who plays a journalist she says a dialogue she says that aaj jo tum kar rahi ho, she says it to Vidya Balan's character jo tum aaj kar rahi ho, wo bagawat hai saalo baad isi ko log azadi kahenge <laughs> there was a point when you have done that you know so many things in your personal life which today has become the norm that time you were called a rule breaker you and today you are a ground breaker because so many people follow you right. similarly you sir when you started off there was a there was a definite difference or a def differential treatment given to the films like oh. parallel cinema ye yeah. wo aaj wo bridge hi gap ho gaya hai right. and thanks to actors like you you know today we have best actor category where we can see you or an irfan saab getting an award which is the best actor popular right. which is which is iconic and change making <laughs> right. Right? how do you Absolutely. see this from that time to this time it's very good very good it's uh, audience has made it possible because ultimately audience is the judge and they uh, choose this and uh, all the other decision makers in the industry follow that trend and they know that this is changing and the, they are speaking and uh, voicing what the general public wants. Yeah. So their taste is changing and that has changed over the years when India opened up and uh, you know, to uh, our economy uh, opened up in the 90s. So many influences came our way. We started watching different kinds of films. So we, um, I mean, all those things have right. culminated in the taste, uh, you know, the audience's taste and expectation has changed. True. They want to see normal people on, uh, you know, actors on stage and not just stars. Uh, that too, I think the stars will always remain also, but there is space for actors to grow. Yeah, it's coexisting. Yeah. Yeah, co coexisting and almost at an equal at par. At yeah, mm -hmm. par. Absolutely. Yeah. But in the beginning when you both did that and like that, that wasn't the revolution, it's become a revolution today. Was it difficult? The, all the judgments, all the she shaming? She must have she gone through yeah. so much of judgment and uh, 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 that we you really can't compare it with my, my time. Yes, I, uh, when we came, uh, there were certain kind of roles uh, that uh, directors could think of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was very difficult for us to really uh, uh, dream really wildly. Uh, we could not. Uh, but uh, uh, things, you know, slowly you you, know, you have to. You don't uh, give up on your dream. You don't give up on your resolve and conviction then God is always there <laughs> you know with you but you know to tell you the truth I have none of us has ever thought that a thing called OTT will ever happen yeah okay uh, this has this has ma made the change very fast yes. you know it suddenly you know everything changed it disrupted it so badly because the technical technological uh, you know it revolution reminds, happened yeah. okay so it's not um, it's just that we were still there with our conviction and we could we are making the most of it uh, conviction alone you know doesn't do anything to you yeah. there has to be people or the medium to support yeah. you and in this case you know ott has emerged as uh, as, a, so. huh, as, as a major force how, how was it difficult how difficult was it dealing with the judgment back then because today we look at your story and we only get inspired but you have gone through all of that single-handedly you know you live that moment and that moment passes and I had a lot of support uh, from my family from my husband uh, who always gave me space always supported me in everything I didn't have to explain myself um, so I had that kind of uh, uh, support so I've been very uh, blessed in that um, that I was uh, like uh, when uh, my mother wasn't allowed to go to a co-ed university, she had to do her MA privately. I have been asked, how did your husband allow you to work after you got married? Allow you to work after mm -hmm. you got married. And uh, my daughter 
nobody asks her. Absolutely. She lives her, uh, my daughter-in-law. So things are changing. So uh, every, you know, we are going forward. So society is sometimes slow to change, but once change becomes the norm, then the changes also escalates, yeah. and which is happening now world over. Um, the male gaze is still there, the male uh, domination is still there, and as India lives in many centuries, so uh, different pockets of India believes in different uh, so kind of uh, process. But in this uh, wonderful city of Mumbai and Delhi and Kolkata and you know the bigger cities have a different perspectives. So all in all I think uh, we are in a better place. Now. Absolutely. You know coming to you what, what, what I loved was the treatment. Mm. You took us through the emotional ringer and then you just knew how to drop you just there, like just stop it. <laughs> Magician. Okay. okay. And it can only happen when your interpersonal relationships in life are so deep rooted. Mm. Like everybody tells me that I talk like a girl and I have heard that too many times in life. Now I have come to terms with it because I am exactly like my mother. Mm. So whenever right. they tell me, I am like, yeah, because I think like my mother. Yeah, Maybe I am a little more sensitive because I think like my mother. Isn't that a lovely thing? It, wow. is, it is the yeah. most beautiful thing yeah. in the world. Wow. They are so stupid words. Yeah, <laughs> but it's okay. Yeah. But it's fine. I, I take it as a compliment. Yeah. What I think is whenever these kind of films happen, it touches me differently. Again, because my thought process and my conditioning is a little different. You can only make a film when your conditioning is that way, when you are so connected to your parents. I stay away from my parents, not by choice, but by compulsion, right. because I'm working in Bombay and they cannot leave. Right. I cannot uproot them from Calcutta, right. you know. I miss them the most. Mm. Everybody hated COVID. I just loved it only for that one thing, because <laughs> I've stayed so much at home. Right. that now I get, like, I get anxiety if I'm not there for like two months or three months, right. or she's right. not right. coming right. here and staying right. with me. Did you all go through those kind of phases with your mom and dad? When, when you're growing up, you feel like, Oh God, why are they trying to control us? And then you st start feeling that we don't have so much time left with them actually. Yeah, I mean, see, I, I made this movie when I became a father. So uh, for me, it was a very different phase of my life with me and my wife uh, just becoming parents. So I was exper experiencing parenthood while writing it and while shooting it and staying away from my son and then going back to him after a month and a half or two months. So that was my emotion when I uh, met. But I genuinely loved my friends and people that I know who are very close. I really cherish relationships because I, I genuinely believe that it's only people that you have. Yeah. Uh, so I come from that school of thought and that's what translated in the script and then the way we made the film uh, together. Yeah. Right. What do you think about this film? The fact that we are a little... I'm that child who will call my mother and say that, listen, you've not called me for two days. <laughs> and there was a point, my father is retired now and he used to work somewhere else and he would come maybe once in a month and she would forget. I'll say, ha ha, abhi patti a gaya, to isle ko bhul gaya. I'm, I'm that child. So I believe that, like you said beautifully in an interview, that geographically distance shouldn't matter when your emotional bonds are like that. You also have stayed away, you know, from the kids right now when they are living their own lives. Does it become difficult that? At one point, emotionally? No, it sometimes causes a ache in your heart that you cannot do everything that you wish. But you have to kind of accept it that uh, uh, for uh, others, uh, they, you know, once upon a time they couldn't do without their mothers. But now they have their partners, they have their own children. So their affection has shifted somewhat. And... Uh, Mother is not going anywhere, but the mother is being taken for granted, perhaps. But that shouldn't uh, it shouldn't bother you because that is a natural process. Because I've done the same. Yeah. I when I had got married, Tiger became the focus. Then when I got children, then they became the focus, and my focus shifted from my parents. But I wasn't raised by my parents. I was raised by my grandparents. I lived in a joint family, so. Everybody had authority towards us. So we, we kind of tolerance and uh, sharing comes very easily to us because we never had anything that we called our own. It was a communal thing, you know. Yeah. So I can't say that's my doll, that doll can be everybody's. Every, everybody's yeah. So we, if we are very different who come, you know, lived with a lot of other people. Yeah. So they, my aunts are like mothers, you know. Yeah. So. so yeah, so now that uh, the families are different, you just have to accept it. And that ache will always be there. 
which I think comes from loving somebody. But you also live because I, my needs are also very complicated. I want to work, I want to be independent, I want to do lots of other things too. So, so I want to do everything. I want to eat my cake and have it too. Absolutely. And I, I, I just uh, strive for that and somewhere it works out. Manoj sir, you know, um, um, when I was six, I have seen my father really battle like a really, really difficult time because he's a cardiac patient. Mm -hmm. And I think now when I understand the world better, I get to realize that my anxiety stems from the fact that I have a fear of losing them. Like during COVID, I, I possibly I was the strictest child to my parents. I was like, I was trying to bound them because I was like, no, 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 I, I, everybody's losing their loved ones. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. Maybe I was a little too bad to them. I accept it now, but you've lost mm -hmm. parents and you know, nobody, th they say that the pain will never go away. Mm -hmm. You have to just learn to live with the pain. Mm -hmm. Does it become difficult, especially when you've also stayed away from your parents for work sometimes? Mm -hmm. Does it become difficult when you think of or reminisce? Those no, I always stayed away from them. Uh, from uh, when I was uh, in fourth st third standard, from that time I stayed in a boarding. Then I left my village uh, at the age of 18 and after that we have always stayed at a distance. And when they shifted to Delhi, I, I shifted to Mumbai. <laughs> so all, all my life I always stayed away from them. But love for them uh, has never faded, I mean, it never faded away. Even now when they are not there, uh, uh, it is not painful, it is void. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? And that cannot be filled up. Okay, but I, and I don't even try to fill it off. Yeah. Believe me, because that will be painful. Mm. Uh, so I, uh, there are very happy memories, and I completely cherish it. I, uh, it was, it's amazing that uh, when parents are gone, uh, all your com com complaints, whatever you had <laughs> with them, that's that's also gone. So you only have those sweet happy memories of uh, of your parents, which is left with you. And uh, sooner, uh, you know, anyone comes to terms with death is always better, you know, because this is, this is like birth is inevitable and the death is also inevitable. Ma'am, that way I read the foreword that you had written and you know, one word that, one line actually that um, stayed with me is that as much as I feel deprived, I do not feel alone. Um, your marriage was a marriage of equals. In, in that forward, you have beautifully explained how you still feel him around you. Well, that is where I feel that a lot of people say time heals. I do not think time heals, I think memories heal. Uh, and then you, as Manoj said, that you just remember the memories. And, uh, and the void I do not feel, uh, because I feel his presence. because. Uh, I know that if I wanted to do something, if I wanted to say something, what his answer would have been. Mm. So, I know that answer. So, uh, you know, sometimes you argue, but you know, certain things we never agreed upon and certain things and then you look at each other and you know. So, I think uh, those are my personal views that I do mm. not have a void and I feel, yes, his presence all the time. and. Is very much part of my life. Absolutely. Uh, also, you know, when we when we look at how we behave, how we think, it's always about how we have been conditioned, but uh, but by our parents, by our elders who have been around us, by our siblings also in a lot Love of ways. Mm, it's always like it's a, it's a, it's a culmination of people around you. This is a beautiful story of acceptance in a lot of ways. You know, you come to terms with I don't want to say what all, but there there, there is a moment where he comes to terms with something in his life where you come to terms with something is in your life, uh, your character. Mm, acceptance in any form is something that everybody craves for, but more often people do not really ask for it because they do not feel the need to ask for it. Today relationships are suffering because of that. Do you agree? Because when I look at relationships, maybe the one that you, our parents shared or maybe the one that you shared with your wife, you share with your wife or you shared with your spouse, I do not think our generation can really have that, which is why. I think that we are a little distance and uh, like Shah Rukh sir beautifully puts it that we are demotional, we are very emotionally detached. Do you, do you feel that? I, I think you can't generalize yeah. 
I mean, you're talking in a particular way, which makes me think that you're very attached to your parents. Yeah, I am. And uh, Manoj is saying that he has been uh, away from his parents while he's been very close. He didn't feel that need all the time to be with his parents because he could always meet them whenever yeah. he wanted to. His, nobody was forcing him to stay away. He was not imprisoned or anything. So I think everybody reacts uh, differently right. to their... Uh, so, I, I mean, it's all very, you know, these are words being demotional or emotional and these are clever words. But, uh, and you can't categorize an entire generation, generation you know. Well, or then uh, also, I'm also part of that generation. So, I think everybody is uh, different and that's the way it should be. And we still get along and we still, like our commonalities exceed uh, our differences. So... At some point, we always find consensus and we form groups and uh, so that's how the world works really and we find our uh, support groups everywhere. So I think we should be positive about looking at it and not just say that I think we still cry when we read King Lear uh -huh. and every generation, every person, you, you cried when you saw Gulmohar. I'm not comparing right. Shakespeare to uh, uh, <laughs> but it's like but uh, so that will continue to happen and if it doesn't then perhaps human beings would become a robot or something because uh, uh, humanity and uh, emotions are uh, are there in all of us yeah True. and no matter how how we how cool we want to be and how Demotional, we want to be. Um, I think demotional is also an emotion. Yeah. Um, finally, you know, I will ask all of you that when you talk about relationships in a family and dysfunctional relationship, I think we all have dysfunctional families. Like we are only trying to put out that thing that oh, we are completely normal and completely perfect. We are not. None of us are. But in a family, we are. All, we always tend to be a little like somebody. Maybe like our father, maybe like a mother, maybe like a brother, Most of, more often that we are a little different from our siblings. In your families, who have been your biggest inspirations uh, in terms of ideologies and who have you transferred it more to? Like as a parent, who do you think, which child is, is, is he or she more like you or your spouse? I have just one kid who is two and yeah. a half, so it's too oh, early. Oh, it's too early. <laughs> but so, uh, have you been uh, like in your family, like I your mother, I father, could. grandmother, what? No, I think my wife has been a very strong influence on me because we've been friends for the longest time and then we decided to live together and get married. So she is my biggest inspiration and my confidant. And uh, and also the women in my family, like my mother, she's been a very uh, strong influence in my life. She was a homemaker. She, like you said, she, did, she wasn't allowed to work yeah. outside or she had to let go of her education after a while. Now when she's in her 60s, she's like, you know, I wish I would have studied more I, or I wish that in my next birth I will become a doctor or something. And these things make you question as to what you want uh, mm. your children to be. Yeah. What about you, sir? I think, uh, you know, it's a mix. <laughs> uh, some aspects of my mother, you know, uh, influenced me quite a lot. And some aspects of my father, initially I always thought that my father, uh, you know, every father is, is, has some manly quality, you know, so, uh, and my father doesn't have it. So, I kind of uh, always misjudged him uh, as a child. I looked up to my mother, oh, what a woman she is, an iron lady sort of thing. But as time passed by, I realized what a, what a, what a, person my father was. Yeah. He has uh, completely surrendered to my mother and her wishes and he really uh, uh, did never tried to control the family or, or his wife. It was my mother who was, uh, who was everything that a man is <laughs> usually <laughs> in the family. Decision maker. Yeah, decision maker. What about you, ma'am? My grandmother, und undoubtedly, my paternal grandmother. My maternal grandmother died uh, uh, you know, very early, I never saw her, but my maternal grandmother who was, you know, couldn't speak uh, English, but she had no problem communicating with anybody. She was, uh, I don't know, 
she was my inspiration yes and among your kids who is more like you because when i speak to saif and soha i just don't feel they are creatively so talented but they come across as such accepting open individuals which is so important in today's times like they are accepting towards everybody mm. of all age i just mm. feel that they are too accepting thanks to you so and so so they are all uh, different from each other at the same time uh, as you said uh, you know um i'm quite happy about them um i think the, everybody has a little bit of my quality uh temperamentally um i would say so has more like her father and saif is more like my mother i'm um, saif is uh, more like me and um uh saba is a mixture of both but thank you uh like we all say that the, the biggest validation today is in terms of acceptance and i know from the fact that there's been a round of screenings that have happened where people have really accepted the film and uh, it's a beautiful film thank you and i hope that you guys have always continued like you guys have always been the voice and faces of change and i hope and pray that you guys continue to be that for maybe 3 5 Ten more generations because oh we deserve. That's so sweet. We deserve. We deserve this. Thank you so That's much. That's very sweet. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.